looking at our data set, really in about 2003, we had the peak of open gastric bypass. And that's where it began to decline and laparoscopy began to take off. By 2005, you had a very significant amount of cases that were being done laparoscopically. So it's really sort of the hump of our learning curve. And as we have gotten over that, our mortality has very nicely come down. Right. Part of it, there was a learning curve during the open phase that I think we got over. Then we had to repeat that learning curve when we switched to laparoscopy. The, the best bariatric calculator that we had up until this time was based on open gastric bypass. It was the largest series. Uh, and, and we really needed to update these risk factors, give ourselves a fresh look that includes banding, includes sleeve, and is predominantly laparoscopic in its approach. And that's what this really did, was it gave us sort of a, a, a more up-to-date snapshot of our risk factors. And what we found is that some of them changed. Yes, it's still, you're still high risk if you're male. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to look at BMI. We still know that the older you are, the higher your risk for having uh, any sort of perioperative event. Uh, but for example, we were able to tease out that diabetics actually are at higher risk, whereas in the original study by De Maria and his colleagues, it was hypertension and not diabetes. So as we're bringing in a different group of patients to bariatric surgery, along with the different operations, we're finding that our risk factors are changing a little bit. So this is a moving target. I think we've got a good, accurate snapshot now. We'll likely need to look at it again in 10 years when we have an even lower incidence of open procedures and perhaps a greater percentage of patients undergoing sleeve gastrectomy. We found that there were six factors that predict uh, mortality, preoperative factors. Three of those are not modifiable. We can't change age, we can't change payer type, we can't change sex. But we can, probably the most important factor is we can dictate what operation the patient gets. We can counsel them towards or away from a higher risk operation if they're already in a very high risk class. We can mitigate some of that risk by counseling patients appropriately about the different operations and the concomitant risks that come with those. Right. Other things we can do, we can manage their diabetes better preoperatively. Right now, a patient who has uncontrolled hypertension, they don't get an operation. No anesthesiologist puts them to sleep. But nobody stops a patient from going to surgery because their diabetes is out of control. Yeah. And perhaps we need to take a little closer look at that. That's another factor we can mitigate.